It's been called the football crime of the century. Tom Brady's Super Bowl 51 jersey was stolen in plain sight six years ago. Now that the legendary quarterback has announced his retirement for the second time, will history repeat itself? Tonight, I'll introduce you to the dream team that broke the 2017 case wide open and ask its Chicago connection for an answer. The jersey, yeah, I put it in my bag and then I came out and it wasn't there anymore. So if it shows up on eBay somewhere, someone let me know. After Tom Brady's Super Bowl 51 jersey was stolen, it didn't show up on eBay. But thanks to the e-commerce site, another one of his Super Bowl jerseys did eventually come to the attention of law enforcement. One most of us didn't even know was missing. Yeah, so initially uh, we had gotten in touch through eBay. He was purchasing a game used Dion Branch jersey from myself. That was December 2016. At the time, Dylan Bollinger was just 19 years old. The avid sports collector was in the middle of selling another NFL jersey to a man named Martin Mauricio Ortega. As many collectors do, Ortega sent him photos of his sports memorabilia collection, and Dylan did the same. Then he reaches back out a few days later and he's like, hey, did you see my Tom Brady Super Bowl jersey? And I was like, no, nah, no, I didn't see that one. So I started scrolling back through all the photos he had sent me. And uh, there it was front and center in his connect collection right next to the Dion Branch jersey I had sold him. By matching game day photos with the one Ortega sent, Dylan did his own detective work to determine that in fact was Brady's Super Bowl 49 jersey. Uh, there's some pretty gnarly grass stains right on the back nameplate where it says Brady and those are those are stains that you can't replicate and so but initially nobody knew it was missing until uh, the second jersey was stolen hey, did someone take my jersey so when the news broke about Brady's Super Bowl 51 jersey being stolen, Dylan started putting two and two together. I think one of the parts of the story that's really fascinating to me is how you attempted to contact authorities. Yeah, so initially I had reached out uh, to the Houston Police Department because I heard that they were running point on the investigation. Uh, and when I called their non-emergency number, I basically just got the cliche, oh, file a report with your local police department. At the time, Dylan was living in the small town of Kent, Washington. He received similar responses when he called the NFL and the Patriots front offices. It's, they kind of giggled at the fact that, you know, this 19-year-old kid maybe has a lead on it, and that never went anywhere. Dylan says even his own mother didn't believe him, but... Fellow collector and Boston ATF agent Chris Aroni did. When, when Dylan initially sent me the photos of uh, Tom's Super Bowl 49 jersey, I, I, I knew it was uh, right off the bat from just having the experience of dealing in game one jerseys. I knew that it was a real jersey. I thought it was a good investigative lead to give to Brian. Six Brian later, is Brian Brasokas, a newly him. retired Chicago FBI agent. He's known across the country for his work investigating sports memorabilia fraud. But when he first contacted me, I was, you know, both intrigued, but I knew Chris had his background pretty well set. Um, and then just introduced me to Dylan, who basically, um, you know, was this 19-year-old kid at the time who, who just really went above and beyond. This sports collecting dream team helped investigators determine Martin Ortega was the unknown man seen on this security camera footage taking Brady's Super Bowl 51 jersey from the Patriots locker room in Houston. Ortega is a former journalist from Mexico, which is how he happened to be at the game. If Martin had never shared those photos with Dylan, uh, I'm not sure this case could have ever been solved. He, he kind of was his own worst enemy in that respect. That's because in the sports memorabilia world, you can get caught up in what's referred to as a collector's high. When a collector wants an item, not for money, but just to have in his collection and will go to great lengths to get it. Something like that has a double-edged sword to it because you now have a very unique item. It's not like you can go display it to the public to talk to your friends about it, to brag about it. It kind of has to stay in your own collection privately. I'm retiring. Are good. So, with Brady announcing his retirement for the second time, what are the odds history will repeat itself? So, ultimately, anything he does in his last moment on the field is going to be worth a tremendous amount. His last touchdown, the last jersey Tom Brady wore. Even though Dylan and Chris both have prized Tom Brady possessions of their own, 
This case gave all of them something even more valuable. It's been a great friendship. It's a good bond. I don't think we ever get tired of telling the story and how we all came together. Uh, and I'm just so proud of that. Just working with these guys, um, just getting to know them uh, as friends. It's been wonderful. Yeah, it's been an exciting adventure, uh, a story that I'll never forget, a story I'll be able to tell my kids and my grandkids one day. Both of Brady's Super Bowl jerseys were returned to him just uh, a few months after Super Bowl 51. And in Fox Sports, the great Brady Heist, Ortega, said he knows what he did was wrong and that he regretted doing so. Ortega also said in the documentary that uh, he knew he'd be caught because of the photos he shared with Dylan right, okay. two, two months earlier. And Dylan, again, 19 years old when this all happened, was smart enough to kind of put it together right. and bring the information forward. It took a while for, for it to sort of... people to believe him. No, they didn't. Even his mom. Yeah, I know. But in the end, it all happened. And it's kind of cool the way uh, the three of them formed this great yeah. bond and yeah. kinship. So Truly it's cool. a team, yeah. yeah.